Absente de dudas. Hi, hello, hi. Hey, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's why we're taking We'll keep yeah, trying. We to, and we have to keep troubleshooting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. Hello. Thank you so much for having me join you today. And it's so, I, I'm so glad that we are able to, to get this done today. Right? Yeah. It's so, it's so glad, it's so good to finally get to meet you. And um, wow. and thank you for so much for all you've been doing in the field. It's it's so wow. for me it's to me it's it's quite inspiring that you've been in the field for over thirteen years. That's amazing. Actually in Nigeria that we, we don't get to see a lot of sound engineers in Nigeria that are been yeah. in actually and are doing professionally well. And kudos to you, kudos to you. And um, I, I I read your profile. Um, when I started the other live interview, but I'm going to just quickly read it again for our viewers to uh, just you. Um, Adeduke Komino is the CEO of SB Frequency, she's a professional sound engineer, audio instructor, and she's also the CEO of um, she's the head of system tech for GQ Acoustics. And you've done, you've done a whole lot. and. I'm really, really, really greatly inspired by all that you have done in the field, and it's it's amazing to see that you still keep up and you're you're advancing in the field. You uh, you you keep the dream alive. 13 years is no joke. It's no jokes at all. So I just yeah. wanted to get to um for those who will be joining us, how did you start? How did this journey start for you? How were you able to? So, uh, what what um, led you into audio engineering? What inspired you to come into the field? Okay. Um, um, first of all, I, I actually want to um, comment what you're doing. Um, it, Thank you it, it, so it, much. Please, that that you are um, adding this um, audio audio girl thing. You know. Thank you. Um, I very very tall. As a woman in a man's field, we won't, we won't take that away from it at all. So, um, but um, let me just correct something. Um, I was the system tech at UQ Acoustic, but not oh, anymore, right? Yeah, we are now. Great. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no, no problem. It's still part of my profile, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're now sub distributors to GQ Acoustic now, as an under yeah. GQ. Yeah, um, May well, yeah, yeah, actually. Oh. So, um, you, you actually asked about um, my audio journey. Hmm. It's a yeah. very interesting one. <laughs> okay, so um, it's a long story, 13 years. So, yeah, I'm going to summarize everything just in a few minutes. So, um, um, actually, I actually started from um, my, my university fellowship then. Um, RCS, I, I, I joined the, the audio department then, and um, I I just had this um, passion to actually do something different, you know, and I knew that I wasn't going to be a DJ. I love music, but I actually wanted something much more challenging and much more taxing. I'm not trying to say DJ work is not challenging, it is. It's, it actually requires a lot of work, yeah. and it's yeah. But for me, it wasn't it for me. So, um, um, joining the um, sound department for me was like the thing for me. So, but although at that time I was really confused, I wasn't so sure what exactly I was gonna do first. I'm a multi-talented person. I can sing. I can um, do other things, but. I didn't I actually knew that I didn't want to be in the office. I didn't want to stay nine to four in an office. So um, I took to the um, audio department and the then technical director, they made me understand the fact that, um, that um, even in the industry, right, that this industry was a very serious industry. I didn't know audio was, was actually this deep then. You know, I just joined out of passion. So, um, and the first thing was Emmanuel Osejuwe, who is now the CEO of A. Oh. I know a lot of people don't know that. 
college to write to that. So, um, so that was where I started from. I started from the roots of sound, like from, I, I didn't know nothing about audio, so I started from the grassroots, tables, fixing some tables, joining guys to um, load, pack up, because then we, we actually used to pack up sound every other service that we had to actually run. So we're always packing, setting up, and uploading. So um, then there was a lady in the in the department that was there before me, Wemimo. One of the things that, that um, uh, Wemimo made sure was that we were not treated as women in the department. Wow. Yeah, that's quite important. You know, um, um, we were actually treated like um, people in the same department with the guys. So when the guys had to stay late nights, we had to stay late nights. When the guy had to catch up cables, we had to do that. So from there, I now became in charge of cables. You know, I was made the one in charge of cables, and it was a very, it was a very important job then. I was made to understand by the audio director then that cables were very important. So that was my um, assignment. Then while I, I was in school and I um, decided to focus on audio, you know, when I was almost graduating university, actually studied university, so um, the um, big question popped up, okay, what was I going to do? Where was I going to be at that? So I actually decided um, I had to speak God's place. I mean, so anything I do, I like to ask God for direction. So, um, and I the confirmation that I had I should go sorry about that. So I actually had the um the leading and the conviction that this is what I have to do like. So um um audio engineering for me is a big deal, right? This is my life. This is what I do and that's what I do and this is what I will do for the rest of my life. So um, I actually started in audio. So just before graduating, there was a TV training in Lagos. My school was in Ubi State then. I traveled from Ubi State okay. to Lagos for the TV training. So that was like my first official training that I actually did was in the um, TV training. And, and, from, and from there, after graduating from school, I actually um, applied for a job at GQ across six. And lo and behold, I was accepted. You know, I was so shocked that they will. So I actually got the offer, and that was how I I actually started working. So um, joining GQ Acoustics, then I actually joined as a trainee. So while I was in GQ Acoustics, I was doing my degree course in um, Kingdom Audio College. I started my degree course in Kingdom Audio College. Um, that in um in a Lagos. So as I as hey, thank you. I, I thank you, Mr. Edward Sunday. You just joined in. Wow. Oh yeah. He said I celebrate you ladies. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> we um as we have a doctor. That's my book. So, um, okay, I'm listening to you. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so, so I actually um, um, joined GQ Acoustics, and while I was doing that, I was doing my training. And um, so, summary, in um, GQ Acoustics, um, opportunity met preparation, and um, I, I um, worked hard, studied hard, um, um, practicalized with every, every day, every equipment I had access to at the point, then, and... Um, I became the head of the system tech department then. And um, after that, I actually um, had my um, my um, degree in audio in Kingdom Audio College. And while in the space of all that, I actually also um, traveled out to um, Mayor Sound headquarters at Berkeley, California. You know, I actually did a training under Bob Makati on system design and training. That I done several trainings with um, um, Mauricio Magu in um, Nigeria. You know, close to like four or five trainings now on the same 
um, system design and optimization. Um, since Maya sounds same free analyzers on how to okay. use this properly, yeah. And um, and after that, you know, um, I actually um, also did a training with um, the Denis Zane too on a map design and as in system sound system design too. And um, okay. um, I in between all this, you know, um, SB frequency came up. And the old journey was our uh, every frequency, um, sound frequency actually. That was where this whole thing started. And uh, right now, um, I now co CEO of the company with my husband, and also Rix Music Productions, which is also a music um, company. So, yeah. um, together, I think that's like a summary of. Of the things that, that I have tried to put into place, there's still so many things involved, like so many, so many other things. Like I have had to work with um, so many companies, like Geo Productions, A Distinct Communications, Majestic Entertainment, um, SSPA, you know, um, then um, wow. with um, engineers like David Dennison, Detrick Zeba. Um, I can go on and on, you know, shows wow. the experience. It's a privilege to have had to have have such experience, you know, such experiences, meeting all these great people, working with great engineers involved in the field and, and all that. Thank wow, you. Wow, that's that's really, really, really great. And that's it's so so inspiring to be able to hear you say and share a little bit from your story. I know we can't get to hear how, uh, almost all that you are saying, but it's it's just so so um, inspiring to be able to see that you were really really doing a lot and you didn't have to face you didn't you didn't uh, you were not you, you didn't have to think of the fact that you were a lady to, um, that wasn't a, a disadvantage to you and it was even an advantage. So um, I just wanted you to just share with us so that we don't, um, share with us if you have actually, are there any women in the field that you have actually worked with or if you have met any woman, any woman who has worked with you on live sound? Because majorly we know we have um, quite a bit of women in music production and um, quite a bit of women in um, that are doing DJing. But when it comes to live sound, you, know, you really don't uh, hear much of um, women, actually here in Nigeria. What do you think are major causes for that? And have you ever worked with any woman in live sound before? Yeah. OK, well, um, um, actually, I haven't worked with anyone in live sound. As in, that is a, a woman in the industry. Fine, we actually have some of them that have been before me, but technically, I haven't worked with any any um, woman. Okay, the only woman that I actually worked with was um, 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 Mrs. Tony Phillips, a very interesting um, musician, actually, and a very good singer at that. So um, she's the only one I can I can really tell that that I've actually worked with so far. But you know, um, we don't have many women in live sound because, like you said, live sound is is a very very challenging when it comes to uh, the timing. You know, combining um, um, late nights. You know, with the long stretch. Live sound, when you do live sound big time, where you have to be on site and work back to back, it can be very, very stressful for a woman. Yeah. Because we are uh, women, you know, as people call us the uh, weaker vessels, <laughs> anyway. But um, we're actually fragile, actually. So we're not as as um, strong and physical as the men. Well, you're and, you know, Yeah? Yeah, you're doing it and you're really, really good at yeah. it. So yeah. So um I just yeah. sorry to I just wanted to ask you, yes, because a lot of people use that as an excuse to um deter women from coming into the field, actually live sound. 
do you really think women have a future in life sound and do you yeah from you i i, I really i'm so inspired personally i'm also into life sound and i just started my job also and you've been a source of inspiration to me so I actually see that yes like there are women in the field that i can look up to like you so i just wanted to ask you what what, what advice do you have for women who want to come into life sound like really really do life sound and what are the things that you think that they can prepare themselves for in the field to uh, the, the kind of things that are coming into life sound? okay okay so um um life sound is for me i actually feel that any woman can can be in life sound and can be successful I started from the scratch. So um, if I could do it, then anybody can do it, actually. Yeah, yeah that's the spirit. Yeah, you know, most women don't actually understand that you need to understand where you are and the kind of work that you do. And you need to know and find a way to actually balance things up. Like now, for instance, I am married and I have two children. Yeah, that, I was about to come to that. <laughs> yeah, so, so how do you combine all that work together and still be excellent at what you do as a life sound engineer? Because this is totally different from the office work people actually know, you know, and and stuff. So. This is yeah. this is odd hours working. Like you have to work odd hours. It's not the regular nine to five where you can drop your child in a crutch and say, okay. Then the crutch I'll close by five o'clock and I go pick them up. No, sometimes you, you actually even plan that, but the setup actually moves into the night. Twelve midnight, you yeah. had access to the venue, and the event starts by nine a.m. the next morning. What do you do? You have to you have to make things work. The clients are waiting on you. You can't keep giving excuses. So actually, um, what I actually advise women to do is you need to understand the field that you're in. Now, when you know that you want to go into lifestyle full time, and this is what you want to do with your life, then you start planning your life for now. You know that you can do the same routines that the other women does. You also know that because of the uniqueness of your sex, you have to study hard, you have to learn more about your field, so that yeah. it gives you an edge such that people can actually say, okay, why would I pick a woman instead of a man? Because um, you should not be seen as a liability when it comes yeah. to the field. To work. Yes. They should not think that, oh, she's on the job, she won't be able to do anything. You know, once it's 10 o'clock, she gives excuses and says she has to go on, it's, it's actually running late, things like that. Or she's tired. Or um, I, I, I baby keeps calling her over the phone. They keep calling her to say, ah, "Come on, you don't know, talk like that." So yeah. you want to make sure that, that you have tidied up all those things. On the other hand, so as 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 a um, upcoming um, as an upcoming live sound engineer, first of all, you have to make sure that that you actually plan your life. To what you're about to go into, and what do I mean? You have to be ahead of the game. You have to learn yeah. the person in the You have to sacrifice more while you have the time. While you're still single, you have to put in so much effort into building your career now. Because when all the pressure starts to come, though, it, it will be tough for you to balance up. And in the midst of marriage and and um, and um, kids. It's actually tough improving on yourself with all the responsibilities and and then and then all the work. Although for me, right, one of the uh, major secrets for me is the fact that I actually am married to a very supportive, wonderful husband yeah. that is also in the music industry that understands oh. what I do. So do you when think I that have Plus, yeah. or, or do you think that's an added yeah. plus, or, or do you think women can um, should begin to plan themselves to if they want to come in, into this field, they should actually go for somebody who understands their vision, their passion for, for the field? Yes, yes, actually, they should actually, um, um, uh, like now, 
before marriage, you have to talk to your talk to your spouse and um, to your um, fiance and and actually ask them. Okay, see, this is what I'm going to be doing. Are you going to be comfortable with me working on hers? So there's some men that are actually very jealous. They can't they can't stand the fact of their women not sleeping at home at night and claiming that they are at work for three days or traveling to another state and staying Hello, on welcome. you know and going from hotel to hotel in the name of work so men can stand that so you these are the things you have to clear up now before you enter into marriage it's not when you enter there are actually many supportive men that i know of yeah. that i industry that they have wives that are into production and they're pretty supportive so that's one of the key things for a woman that actually has a future you know you have to make sure that you marry the right man and yeah, a shout out I hope that, um, yeah, thank I you <laughs> It's been, it's been awesome. It's been, it's wow. been helping me out, you know, running shit. Yeah. <laughs> and since we actually run the companies together, you know, so we can work out the best schedules around. But, but let me just point this out. We can work out better schedules because we have a, um, a, um, a level that we have attained when it comes to professionalism. So we can call, but for people that are all coming, you may not be able to call your shots yet. Yeah. Those are the things that you have to consider that, okay, I need to get a position where where I can call the shots and, and decide I'm not going for this job I want to go for this job you know so these are the key things that um, a woman in the industry has to make sure oh, wow great great uh, and this that's really really an excellent point be ready to make sure you are you are ready to um, just make sure you have all the cards on the table and see yeah. what you are really going into. Prepare for what yeah. you're going in. Get ready for whatever it takes. Get into it. And yeah, I'm really glad that you have the you have a very great support system around you. And it's really great to see that people are um, at these days. I think men are beginning to support me, and it's really cool to shout out to all the men who are supporting their, their the people. Women are cool to have. It's a good time to have people like that around. And I know it's been around for a while, but I just wanted to ask you again. I know there are challenges in the field. I, I, I know it has not been. Uh, all beds of roses, yeah. But I just want to ask if you have ever, if, if there's ever been a time that you felt like, am I sure this is what I really wanted to do? Am I really sure this is where I want to be? And oh, I've been able to yes, because we've heard of stuff of um, things about sexism in the field for uh, actually male dominated field where um, you get some people um, pass some sexual advances or harassments in the field. I just wanted to hear your view about that and how women can begin to um, avoid such um, things and then how, if you have, in any way, if you think, has, has there been any time you have faced any um, sort of harassment in the field, actually? Sorry to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. You put me on the spot. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> So um, um, actually, actually, um, my take on on the on the sexual thing is this: um, some women also feel that they can use their body to actually get things. Yeah, you know? that's the two-way thing, actually. Yeah, yeah the two-way thing. So um, they don't believe in actually knowing what to do what they and having the skill. You know, and um, they actually feel, oh, I'm a woman, Jerry. Let me start to sleep with the head of production. And suddenly, I don't have to the gig. What happens in a hands dominated field is this. Once one guy has slept with you, then every other guy starts to talk about it. And they start to take turns. So, 
you lose your respect, number one. Number two, you are treated anyhow. So that um, treatment you're looking for, you actually miss it and you lose it in the first place. Number three, at the end of the day, after all has been said and done, you will be out of the industry in no time. That's what yeah. happens. It's just a matter of time. Now, on the other hand, as to um, as to men making advances, there's no feel that men don't make advances at women. Yeah. Either you do in the field or not. Or you work in the office, a boss somewhere will want to make advances at you. So it's your decision to make sure that you don't give in to that. Because at the end of the day, like my pastor says, he says, if you jump up, you will, you will jump down, you will fall down. Climb up, you will stay up. So if you're in a hurry to just, you know, just to be successful and you want to actually just, you know, um, cut all the corners. See, in this field, right, we have to take ourselves, we women, as there's no gender. Yeah. That is how you have to There's no gender, yes. Yeah. You know, it, it's like the um, the um, army guys in the military, yeah. right? There's yeah. no gender. And when the bullet comes, either you're a man or a female, the bullet is no gender. It knows no gender, my sister. So it will eat you and eat you hard. So the thing there is, you have to make sure that either the passes at you or you feel you want to use your sex to actually get what you want. It doesn't work. You have to work hard. You have to work hard. You have to prepare. And when the opportunity comes, you know, um, opportunity with preparation is possible. Yeah. So just, just stay at what you're doing. Be focused on it. It's just a matter of time. Your yeah. reward is Wow, thank you so, so much for for all these words and encouragement. And I think you just, it, you just it nailed it for us. There is no gender in this field. All, everything, nobody cares whether it's a man. Everybody wants to see a good job. So you just get to do your job well. Just, just ensure that you are, you are, you are uh, you're getting better and better at the field. Thank you so much. For, for granting us this audience. And um, I don't know if there's anything you would like to share with, yes, because we're celebrating women right now, women in the wow. field, and to encourage a girl and inspire who's feeling like, okay, maybe there's just a word for a girl out there who wants to come into this field. What would you advise for somebody who is just about to start out? Okay, okay, so um, um, first thing I would advise any woman is you have to be sure of what you want to do. You have to be sure that this is what you want to do, so that in the midst of the challenges, you're strong because you know where you're headed. So you have to determine and make up your mind that this is what you want to do. Number one, number two, you have to study hard. You have to you have to learn more. You have to, to you have to update your knowledge. And other industry needs a the um. Um, daily um, um, updates. Technology changes every day. So you have to be yeah. in the game. You have to know what's happening. You. And you have to update yourself regularly by by going for courses. You never stop learning. I, I yeah. still learn. I'm still learning. And I will still keep learning. The day I stop learning is the day I start to fail. So you have to keep you have to keep learning. You have to keep um, 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 studying. Also, you have to have mentors. The people Thank that you, have Mr. been in the industry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have um, 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 people in the industry that are actually um, ahead of you. Like personally, I have I have like um, like um. Two fathers in the in the other industry. One of them is a Mr. Peter Uriah, the um, wow. CEO of the Aquasis, US of Distributors too. You know, he, he actually um, 
um, advices, you know, putting so much into 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 um, training and um, and I'm also sound, you know. Yeah. They actually are like one of the biggest com sound companies in Nigeria right now. You know, it has mad equipment, technical with high technology. So um but, but one thing there is this. We actually um try to um um learn everything we can learn from him when we have, have the opportunity to also so yeah. we have um engineer Isaac um is is like the professor in the in the um training or the industry you know so he also advises us so many times aside from um, from him you know he has he has done so much to actually put us through in so many things and we won a franchise with kingdom what you call it to where we do one you know so you have to have mentors we also have senior colleagues that that we actually associate with, that, we, that that I actually mix up with, you know, that are in different things. Trust me, when I say senior colleagues, I'm not talking about about all the people that are that are really really old and stuff. That's not what I mean. I mean people that have been in the industry before you. Yeah. They know some secrets you don't know. Yeah. Just, I mean every aspect. Like now, I have senior colleagues in every aspect, which is um, even at um, at um, Alaba when it comes to all the Alaba things. I have mm -hmm. there. I have first. Do you understand? When yeah. it comes to the technical things, I have senior colleagues there. When it comes to the to the um, regular sound system, I have senior colleagues. Do you understand? There's nobody is a highland or himself you have to you have to you have to learn from people and True. and the and the last thing there is you have to be prayerful i i don't take god away from everything anything that i do god is the major thing for me yeah. he's the major is because of everything that i have and the last thing is be the best at what you do and yeah. It's just the beginning, you know. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. And we hope to do more of this with you soon. And then hopefully get to have you as one of our mentors for all young girls who are coming up in the field, too. Wow. So, thank you so, so much. We appreciate you. And we thank love you. you. Thank you for giving us thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, yeah. for joining. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for staying with us. And yes. See you next time. All right. Bye. Bye.